conversations we can't have on the internet, oh which is why God. we do it before we start the official yeah. show. Hello, yeah. everyone. It's Friday. <laughs> Welcome to an end of the week edition of the Bid Nerds. My name is John Polnick. I am your host of your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer. My chuckling partner over there, Michael Deep, <laughs> coming to you live from San Francisco Bay. How are you, Michael Deeb? Oh. Awesome, man. I love rolling into uh, live on air with a preemptive <laughs> sensor. JP. Good stuff. We talk about all the stuff we're not allowed to say <laughs> yeah. on the oh. internet before we start the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and it looks like Deeb is trying to make sure that we're not monetized by wearing, you know, uh, a yeah. bunch of crap that's uh, totally licensed. And, uh, you know, we can't <laughs> name the name of what he's wearing there. Nope. But, uh, yeah, so thanks for thanks for wearing trademark stuff on a show. So good thing yeah. nobody pays us yet. So uh, yeah. it's all good in the hood he's supporting a team that lost and is not going to the super bowl whatever that's his choice um, it's, it's a it's a big weekend jp go sports <laughs> sports ball sports ball yeah all right God, right on i hope they get a goal <laughs> yeah yeah make the mark <laughs> uh, it's the... so <laughs> speaking of competition uh what we do on this show is we make predictions about what we think cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer will actually hammer for when the cars <laughs> come to the auction block and people are bidding and frenzying and uh, michael deeb and i we we uh we make our individual guesses we'd say predictions is way too fancy a word it really is just straight up yeah. guesses uh because what the hell do we know uh, uh, but we do have a lot of fun with it, uh, and so we always start the show off by talking about yesterday's cars. Uh, you may have seen a thumbnail today about a really, 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 really nice Volkswagen A1 platform Oof, GTI, a 1983 yeah, that is... looks really nice. So we will get to that car when we start talking about today's cars, but first, let's go over yesterday's cars and see how Michael and I did. Before we even do that, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button, and uh, tell some friends that we're doing the show. We do it Monday through Friday. Uh, we talk about all these cars and cars and bids just like you do so why don't you join the conversation all right michael deeb what was our big car of the day yesterday Ooh, so yesterday we started off i think that car was in florida jp on cars and bids we had a 2011 subaru wrx sti this is the four-door hatchback all-wheel drive manual transmission turbocharged rally homologation special in just like beautiful cobalt blue metallic paint they call it uh world rally blue because that's subaru's racing colors um i love these things this this sucker was cool uh this was a no-nonsense low miles i think it had like thirteen thousand miles on a car that's essentially 10 years old um it had zero modifications in fact uh it had some really cool features uh, or, or options that were available from Subaru as a, like a dealer installed thing with like the short throw shifter and a few other cool mods, uh, but but nothing aftermarket. So just a, a, a true no nonsense survivor that's ten years old and barely broken in. The MSRP on this car was thirty six thousand dollars, and I guess that this car would come up really close to that at thirty four. You took the more conservative tack and said thirty thousand, and I, I say it's not a bad guess because. There's plenty of these cars out there, uh, but the Subaru fanatics love this thing. This car brought and sold thirty-eight thousand dollars, which is a few thousand bucks over original MSRP. So, who knew, JP, that your your Japanese import rally take a lot of abuse car uh, would hold its value so well? What do you think? Yeah, I I mean I really it's the car I should have known. I mean it's too new. I should I mean that not that this is a car that you take the CarMax. It, I mean this really is an enthusiast car and this is, you know, it was good that it was on this platform. Uh, apparently I mean cuz it clearly brought all the money. I think CarMax oh, yeah. would have given the person 20 something. Uh, 27, for, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for totally. for a 10-year-old, you know, sports car like this, even though it has low miles and even though it looked like it was in really good condition, but this is the reason why you take a car like this and you don't trust the NADA book, you don't trust KBB, no. uh, you don't go to CarMax. This is why you take an enthusiast car like that and you sell it on a place like Bring a Trailer Cars and Bits. Yeah, you bring it to a national audience and you know, to the audience here, you know, I digress. We we joke about bringing cars, especially younger cars, to CarMax mm -hmm. all the time, and it sounds like we're saying it in jest. We're actually dead serious. Yeah. You know, you legit book uh, sometimes over low book value for the car, which is better than you get on trade-in at most car dealerships. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while, it does make sense if you know you have something special that's in 
you know, in a limited production, excellent condition, low miles, uh, unique features, that kind of thing. It does make sense, as JP saying, to bring it here to a platform like this where it will be received by a national audience. Then if we cover it on the show, that's as good as gold. So that guy owes us, what I say, JP, 10%. He owes us $3,800. Yeah, we were for waiting it. for a bunch of checks from people. Yeah, my God. Their, uh, their uh, yeah. value of their cars. I haven't seen them yet. Yeah, yeah so we need to have an account. During COVID. We need yeah. to have a neon sign behind you that says accounting, and then we turn it on every time yeah. we do some money. This guy yeah. owes us some bank. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we jumped over to bring a trailer to look at uh, what turned out to be a very cool uh 1992 bmw 318i convertible mm -hmm. with a hard top uh reasonable miles it was over 100,000 miles but it was so clean it really looked like it had somewhere between 60 and 80,000 miles just by the the general wear and tear Th this car has been pretty well kept up um i believed in this car i said 19,000 you really like fell for it and and said you know 21,000 bucks might bring this car home I was really shocked to see that this car sold for just $16,250. E30, love, where are you at, man? Come on, like, step uh, I, up. I'm 100% I'm sure it's because of the weather. I mean, this car was in Maryland. Uh, to get this car home uh, meant uh, wow. having to ship it. And, you know, still, you're something like this, you want to, you want to, yeah, I mean, I think it would have been worth it. And there were some, I mean, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of chatter. Uh, there was a fella that's very well known as kind of like the E30 expert in the comments. Cause I was yeah. watching this car uh, and I'm not going to name his name because I don't know if I really believe in that guy. Uh, you guys can look uh -huh. at the comments and, and, you know, judge for yourself. Uh, some people claim to be the E30 gurus and right, you know, right, right, it's right. like, some it's like, yeah, I think they just like calling. I think they just, like the attention and they are certainly knowledgeable right. people and that's one of the cool things about the communities on these websites uh but i i think the chatter didn't help i think there was just a lot of odd comments even though it was oh, all, man, that's messed it, but, up. but the thing is none of it was negative like nobody was going oh this is a bad car you shouldn't buy it or or any problems like that it was just kind of like more like hey look i'm an expert and because i'm an expert i think this that and the other and it was just like oh, man i just rubbed me the wrong way I, I think whoever bought this car got a steal i think that Absolutely. chatter helped them i feel bad for the seller of this car but I if this too. thing were in california if it were in uh oh, rancho LA? cucamonga uh, oh my this god sucker would have gone for over what i think uh it should have gone so uh yeah. i think the price was way under i lost uh i lost the prediction because i didn't read the tea leaves but you know uh yeah this is the it, car it just, i wanted to get from yesterday absolutely and it was you know listen uh jp correct me if i'm wrong 92 had to be like the last year for this it platform was. Yeah. yeah oh no actually so, i'm sorry let me 93 let me, 93 now so huh, it's confusing because the e30 uh lived on even though uh -huh. the e36 came out in 92 uh they yeah. continued the two-door and then the convertible for another couple of years. So right, 93, right, right. you could still get an E30 convertible on the showroom floor next right. to a four-door uh, yeah. E36. But, but I mean, it, it, again, I believe this car has got like the last, you know, as it's one of the last years for that platform, it's got yeah. the updated steering wheel. Yeah. It's got the, what looks like the M3 sports seats. Yeah. I mean, there's just really cool features on this car. I, obviously that four cylinder is a teeny bit anemic. It's not like, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to lose control of the car because it's so powerful, but what a great driving car. And, yeah. and man, yeah, really well bought. Congratulations, yeah. new owner. I think you stole that thing. Stole it. Um, yeah, our uh, Alfa Romeo GTV did not uh, do what I thought. On Bring a Trailer, we saw a 74 uh, GTV last year in the United States. California black plate, cool car. Um, it was right in the high $49,000 range when we looked at it. And this car, I'm not sure, JP, this car got another bid after we looked mm. at it. Um, so somehow we put the hocus pocus on this. I thought it could easily bring 60 or more. Y you took... The smart and conservative tack underneath me at 55. I said 58. You said 55. Again, the car sold for $49,750. I'd say it was well bought. Decently sold. I mean, look, I think it'd be hard to get 50 grand for a GTV on Craigslist. You need a national audience to kind of mm -hmm. fight over this car to bring the values up. But they're there for the good ones. And this, by all accounts, looked like a good one. Um, JP, you said you would knew that Alpha shop up in Tacoma, Washington, that did mm -hmm. the refurbishment on this car several years ago, and it's held up well. So well done. Um, 
Go ahead. No, I was going to say, as a Porsche guy, I love this car. I, you know, I love the era. I, I love everything that screams about the era that it's from. And I got to yeah. say, for fifty grand, man. I mean, think about it, what you know. How much would a nine eleven be of its contemporary? What you're right. saying, right? Seventy four. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you're right there in that. You know, the first year of the of the Long Hood. Uh, whereas yep. you know, seventy three, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah. the first year of the impact bumper. Last year, of the yeah. Long Hood would be seventy three. So I mean, yeah. to get a Long Hood for fifty grand ain't gonna happen i mean not for a good one this car has all that eyeball and you know as much as i love 911s and classic 911s i you know you see them everywhere so this is a car that you can roll into a car show or or go out and and mob on and there's not going to be 50 of them there and that's kind of yeah this car is underpowered compared to a a mid-year porsche Mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but this car looks fantastic when you take those yeah. bumpers off and you drop, you know, you're dropping like over a hundred pounds when you take the bumper off the car. And now you're talking about four or 500 pounds lighter than an impact bumper early nine 11. So it, the, the performance is there. It, it can yeah. keep up. It's not going to yeah. crush a nine 11. I'm not saying that, uh, but it's, it's not, there's not the big ca- Canyon in performance that you might yeah. think there would, you're going to look much more sophisticated doing it though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially if you're you drinking an espresso. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. And then the shocker of the day, the, the God killed a kitten yesterday because somebody spent $40,000 on a freaking oh front, front wheel drive Cadillac. <laughs> this so, is the worst. I, <laughs> Deeb, I don't want to talk about the, the look one. We're going to give this oh, car 60 seconds. So this is the single <laughs> worst car we have ever talked about on <laughs> Bid nerds. This is a <laughs> pile of nerd turd. Uh, 20 seconds, take oh it away. We're moving on. We are not talking okay. about this thing anymore. The 93 Alante with like, you know, a couple thousand miles on it. I said 25, you said 24, which would have been all the money according to the book. Yeah. Uh, and they and over twice th- as much money as it's actually worth. And, and and they fought over this car, JP. And I said to you yesterday, this is probably the nicest one to come to market in the last handful of years. Uh, and this car sold for forty thousand dollars. So uh, just crazy! Congratulations to the seller. You made off like a freaking bandit. And that uh, guy has got to be headed right to Vegas. He's got to be I, coming right here to I, be like, I am. Yeah, holy yeah. I promise you, uh, in the coming months, as we roll into spring, there are going to be so many freaking Cadillac Alantes mm-hmm. on both bring a trailer and cars and bids. They are, yeah. they're going to come out of the garage and onto the website. You'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then our last car of the day was better the than 96. GameStop. Yeah. It was better. Is the Honda Prelude VTEC. Um, these, this is the red 96, the, the wedge shaped one. Um, eh, I don't know. It, 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 listen, you're right. This car could be fixed. It, it could be helped, but it still was like 200,000 miles. Um, anyways, I said 8,500 bids. It looked like it was going to go strong. You said 7,500. I don't think the car got another bid. It sold for $5,100. I feel like there's a ton of egg on my face on this one. I didn't like the car, and I still overbought it. <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, the I, thing is, this car... Weird. The car is an enthusiast car. I, you have to appreciate right. that about it. And it's a it, it has a low barrier of entry. So if someone's watching this, this is the kind of car that you would think someone would go, eh, what the hell, I'll throw a couple yeah. bucks at it. But, you know, right. are there really a bunch of, you know, I mean, this is a kid's car, though, too. I mean, no real adult yeah, wants it this is. thing. And if nah. the seller had spent just a couple of bucks uh, in fixing those two, th- the two glaring things, the hideous wheels the that wheels. I still believe that you could have gotten a set uh, yep. for yep. next to nothing that would have made the car look exponentially better and then recovered the red inserts on those seats and now you've got a car that would have because at first glance you'd be like oh my god is this a super original car but this car your first impression is oh it's a modded up car and it has a gajillion miles kid had it It, piece of junk exactly it looks like it was it looks like it was owned by somebody that was young and and most people don't want that not at Mm -hmm. an investment grade which is where I was thinking this yeah. car might come in. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we should notice, uh, should re-mention, is that that this car was on cars and bids. Mm. I wonder if it would have brought a little more money on Bring a Trailer, but again, not. Almost I don't think everything so. does, but yeah, probably yeah. not much. I mean, not not without doing the things you mentioned. If yeah. if somebody had done those two things and put on Bring a Trailer, yeah. maybe eighty five hundred would have been achieved. But anyway, I got yeah. that one wrong. You got it yeah. right. So uh, JP, not to get too weird, but um, yesterday keeping score, I got a field goal. You got a safety. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. A couple of fouls right. in there too. All right. Um, 
<laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, so that was yesterday. This is what we do every day on Bid Nerds. We nerd out about the most interesting cars on Cars and Bids and bring a trailer, except that Cadillac Alante, which was interesting only because it was such a piece of dog crap that we thought it was worth <laughs> mentioning. Um, so, uh, all right, look. We talk about cars. We're going to get to the cars, uh, the most interesting cars today. Uh, you know, people are constantly asking us about selling cars and selling their cars and, and, you know, how much they should ask and stuff like that. And, and everyone's like, well, have you ever sold a car on any of these sites? And the answer is yes, I have. Uh, and I'm really going out there on a limb. Uh, I have decided to sell my own personal Porsche 2008 Cayenne with a manual transmission on Bring a Trailer. It's going up here like within a couple of weeks. I just the ad is uh, finally approved. JP, yeah. my my text line is blowing up. People want to know if you wouldn't mind sharing what the reserve is on your car. On my uh, on my car. Yeah. On my What's the reserve? 2008 Porsche Cayenne. Mm -hmm. The reserve is Bubkiss zero. There is no reserve. This car is gonna sell on Bring a Trailer. What? Uh, uh, you know, I'm putting my money where my mouth is, man. Oh, uh, we say it over God. and over and over again. And uh, to that end, I'm going to show you a little video that I prepared. Oh, my God. For You're the crazy. Car. No we're not going to show you the whole thing, uh, but we're going to just talk about that for just a minute, and then we'll get to today's car. So here is oh, my 2008 my. Porsche Cayenne. Uh, maybe. Let's see maybe. Let's get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pray uh, to the God of technology. Do, 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 do. Let's get rid of that. Let's. Go I hear the dating this. game theme. Ba -na 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 -na. Oh no, wait, that's uh, Jeopardy, right? Let's see if it does it. I don't know what it's doing. Anything? You got You guys got a black screen here. You like that? That's pretty yeah. exciting. Tell uh, Rochelle to fire up the special get machine. Those nerds! Yeah. Okay. Hey everybody, it's JP Hold from on. Bid Nerds. I'm doing it. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. This Cayenne, super rare, one of 600. It's a Cayenne manual with a six-speed. That's right, a six-speed manual transmission. This car, it's mine, and it's going on Bring a Trailer with no reserve. How's that going to work out? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Ah. Guys, Good. we are, uh, this nerds. is, here we go. Hey, We're going to try that again. <laughs> Bid nerds. I'm doing it. I'm Sorry, putting my everybody. money where my mouth is. This Cayenne, super rare. One of 600. It's a Cayenne manual with a six-speed, that's right, a six-speed manual transmission. I just wanted this to really car, reinforce it's mine, the fact that it's going a manual for everybody. on Bring a Trailer with no reserve. How's that going to work out? Well, we'll find out soon enough. You should write somewhere on the car, like a sticker. <laughs> no reserve, yeah. <laughs> want this car. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right, this is my 2008 Cayenne base with a manual six-speed transmission. We're gonna go take it for a drive real quick on one of my favorite roads. Uh, this Cayenne is equipped with 19-inch wheels. Uh, it does have the street tires on it. I also have a set of 18-inch wheels with off-road tires, but today we're driving with street wheels uh, since we're on a twisty road and it's gonna be kind of fun. Uh, the default thing to do on one of these is to hit the sport button. If you see some flies flying around, it's because we're out in this location. There seems to be flies everywhere. So um, there's nothing dead or rotting in the car. I promise. <laughs> oh, it sounds good, dude. Thanks, man. I mean, the Remus exhaust in there just, it's make, it transforms the car. <laughs> I mean, who, who does this in a Cayenne? That's incredible. All right. I love how you drive it like it's stolen. Well, you know, maybe I did. I don't know. I, I won't say anything. <laughs>
Uh, all right, guys. So that's it. That's my 2008 Porsche Cayenne. Uh, you can see that entire film on our YouTube channel. It's also going to be on the Bring a Trailer ad when it goes live. Uh, so spread the, you know, spread the word. Let everybody know that my Cayenne is for sale on Bring a Trailer with no reserve. So come yep. steal my Cayenne. I'm going to miss that thing. I don't know why I'm selling it, uh, especially every time I watch this video. I'm just going, <laughs> I'm, good Lord. Um, yeah, so pretty stoked about it, though, guys. So anyways, thanks for watching that part uh let's get to the cars that are going on the auction block today we've talked about the past we've talked about the future time for the present let's talk right. cars going on cars and bids right now what is the big car of the day today michael oh, i JP, believe it's an a1 isn't it jp we have a very Woo! cool car it's a 1983 that. volkswagen rabbit gti uh you keep calling it a1 am i wrong to say it's a mark one is that the same thing uh it, it's kind of the same thing yeah so yeah so the a1 is uh is the chassis the first uh, front wheel drive basically chassis all the cars of volkswagen right. were based on this chassis at the same yeah. time so the rabbit the scirocco the, the uh, golf the golf yeah the golf yep. and the gtr are the identical car even the jetta yeah. was based on the a1 the a1 platform continue on even though even when they start when they came out with the A2. So yeah. uh, the Jetta and the Golf uh, GTI, those became A2s, whereas the Scirocco uh, continued on the A1 platform, and so too did the uh, Rabbit Cabriolet. So uh, a little bit of Volkswagen lore there. So that, that's, why it's, that's why it's not quite fair to say Mark, because yeah. the Marks were inconsistent. Anyways, sorry. We're here so to talk about GTI. Volkswagen took this just purely utilitarian car and just worked a little tiny bit of magic. Yeah. Alloy wheels, um, these little, um, you know, wings on the front and rear fenders, the little lower front air dam, and then, you know, little decorative red on the grill. And, and by and large, even with an eight valve, 1.8 liter inline four motor and front wheel drive with terrible torque steer, a manual transmission and some cool seats. And then this car, a star was born. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really the grandfather of every cool car Volkswagen has made since the early 1980s. And, yeah. and this, it, 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 a lot of Volkswagen success is due and, and, you know, is comes from this car. It's, this is the top of the lineage. Um, to see one in this condition is really a rare sight indeed. Most of these cars have been driven to within an inch of their life. Most of these cars have been modified or rusted out or crashed. And this car out of Monterey, California, with 154,000 miles on the clock, still looks to be in incredible original preserved condition uh it, it's just it's a treat to see one the, the biggest thing to me jp is the seats you know how do you get 150,000 miles without wearing out the driver's seat yeah. so uh i i love this car um silver is actually a really hot color on it uh, i love the interior i love the steering wheel everything about this car is cool is it fast no is it fun to drive hell yeah uh, boy you'd be stunned at how much attention you would get if you showed up anywhere at a car event in this car everybody would give you the thumbs up and uh and come running over to ask questions about the car and how long you've had it and where on earth did you find one that is so nice so jp our car is to me i, I think it's kind of a shock it does have 35 bids but it's only at fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars again uh this is a uh monterey california car at the moment take it away john what do you think yep i mean absolutely fantastic car gotta love that little golf ball shift knob there because it yep. is a uh, golf car uh you know pictures sell cars man and this car should bring all the money cars and bids uh maybe not the best platform for it because this car really is special i believe it oh, would bring yeah. a lot more if it were on I bat agree. but uh this is the kind of this is the kind of auction that can make or break cars and bids because yep. if this car doesn't bring the money then people really are gonna i mean i think cars and bids is in one of those places is it, it's at a point right now where people are going do i even bother trying cars and bids because i mean it's just we're seeing fail after fail after fail not necessarily in failing to sell but cars failing to bring the money that they should should um, bring yeah yeah so uh it's gonna be very interesting to see how this car goes uh, I want this car to bring all the money. I want this car. So it would be kind of nice to be able to purchase it and steal it. But, you know, I, I don't think that's going to happen. God, I love that leather dash and everything. God, these are so much fun. It just brings
brings back so many memories. Um, right. If you've ever, you know, it's funny that you say they've been driven within an inch of their life. If you've ever seen one being driven in anger, you'll notice that the uh, the counter uh, corner, rear corner, it's yeah. going around the Lips. left. The counter rear Lips. corner is <laughs> is within an inch or two off the ground, and mm-hmm. yet they're, they they'll never roll over on you. That's just a, yeah. a characteristic of the car. Yeah. Even yeah. the headliner is good on this thing. I mean, oh, the red man. stripes on the door cards, the the stripes on the seats this car is so good they did all these little details that you would Mm -hmm. take individually and say why are you bothering and yet somehow they added up to be greater than the sum of their parts because as a as a car enthusiast as a kid jp we're similar age and you know we were at that at that impressionable age in the Mm -hmm. early 80s do you just look at this and it's instantly it's like oh that's so cool it's a gti and everybody's like it looks like a freaking toaster. Like if you yeah. just take the silhouette, <laughs> what's the big deal? Uh, but this is our, you know, our famous designer, uh, Gugugario. G- G- I always screw up his name. But um, JP, on the rockers, there's these two decals, the thick black stripe followed by the thin black stripe. Mm. Uh, would those have come from Volkswagen or is that like a... Yeah, oh, there it is. And stuff, the, yeah. It's yeah. right there in the photo. Yeah, look at that. All right, cool. And then here is uh, – <laughs> this looks like an original GTI commercial. Oh, man, great. that's awesome. Look at him. Cool. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look, Volkswagen had the best ads. That's so great. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. This is so awesome. Um, yeah, for, for those that don't know, Volkswagen has had a history since, like, the late 60s in the United States for having award-winning advertisements time and time again. I mean – they have just they have rewritten the rule book on what it means to have like a self-deprecating sense of humor while advertising your product uh, with an endorsement. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. they, they correct me if I'm wrong, JP, but that's the basic take. They have just they, they've just rewritten the rule book and, and they still every once in a while they reset the bar. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in in recent years, Volkswagen, I feel like ha- they have lost their way. They're, Volkswagen doesn't make a cool car anymore. Uh, TD, the TDI <laughs> debacle really messed them up, and yep. uh, and it just seems like they're not interested in taking risks at all. In fact, they seem to be hyper conservative. They're putting all their chips in on uh, things like warranties and stuff like that. And of course, they're going oh, all right. electric uh, very soon here. Um, you know, they're they're selling third rows and. Uh, uh. Seven Seven-year warranties, and that's just like that just screams Chrysler in the '80s to me, uh, and it's, yeah. it's very, very yeah. sad. Volkswagen yeah. to me is a dead brand. I mean, I just couldn't yeah. care less stop. about Volkswagen. Volkswagen, wake up and stop taking the yeah. Cadillac Elante approach to selling cars. Right, right. Uh, um, you know, ten years ago, I was hired to go to the factory in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, uh-huh. to have to, we we did a talk to uh, the dealer group down there in Volkswagen of Mexico um it was about social media stuff, but who cares? Uh, the thing we got, I got the chance to sit in a in a car from Mexico City to Puebla, which is about a two hour you know drive. So I was yeah. in a van, a Volkswagen van, a you know modern yeah. one with the head of engineering of Volkswagen, you know, and yeah. and I sat there and I was trying to convince them for two hours that they needed to take, uh, you know, whatever the, the the whatever platform the the not the Touareg but the Tiguan, you know, they're kind of like yeah. mid size uh, yeah. SUV, yeah. make Macon, that. Yeah chop the damn roof off to have a roof that comes on and off, make it boxy looking and call it a Volkswagen thing, <laughs> uh, oh you know, and make it look, Jesus. you know, basically make it a Volkswagen Wrangler because yeah. Wrangler is eating everyone's lunch. Nobody wants a piece yeah. of that sector. You don't have to put the engine yeah. in the back like the old one. You don't have to it just use the same platform like you do with all the other cars. Hell, use the Jetta platform. Use whatever platform you got sitting there. Just make it a little boxier on the outside and Bring then the roof the come thing, on and yeah. off. And call it the thing and everyone would go ape crap over it and you'd have something that would take a piece out of the uh, Wrangler's lunch. Uh, instead, right. they like, he looked at me like I was a lunatic, which I, I mean, let's face it, I kind of am. Um, yeah. And uh, Bronco did it instead. So good for Ford. Right. For, I was just saying, right somebody thing. from Ford was in the car. That's for Yeah, sure. so here it is. We live in a topsy turvy <laughs> upside down world where Ford is making the correct decisions when it comes to understanding the marketplace and Ooh. Volkswagen is completely out of it. They have no idea what yeah. people want. None. Somewhere somewhere Gary Ackerman is watching this show and his chin just <laughs> went up a little higher because he's very proud to be Ford blue blood. He is he is yeah. knighted by the Ford family, Gary yes, Ackerman, our, yes. our our dear friend. Well, and, this uh, car, yeah, this car is a car that uh well, let's face it, was in the heyday, the top oh, of Volkswagen. So cool. Uh, this is this is the golden age of Volkswagen. Uh, this is way better than all the Beatles and all that other stuff. 
It's sitting at $14,000 on cars and bids with 35 bids, a lot of action, but not big increments. Where do you think this thing's going to land in an hour? Uh, so JP, with my head, I'm bidding 19,000, but with my heart, this car needs to be 25,000 or more yeah, because yeah. you, where would you find another one? You yeah. can't even find them. Not even in terrible condition. They don't come up for sale. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I with 33 bids, I'd like to think there's a ton of action, but I don't know if the money is on the site. So at 19,000, man, I am betting with my head and I, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm going to say 19 grand and it sells, but yeah. it, it, this car should, this car should be $24,000 or higher yep. Yep. minimum in my yep. opinion. And I don't know that it's going to make it here. Doug, I don't know. You, you got to start listening to us, man. I don't know what to yeah, tell you. Yeah. Look, this car, uh, huh. I, I, I mean, there it is. You're, you're you're right. It should be 25 or more. This car right? should be bringing all the money. It's only at, what, 14, not even 15. 14, grand. 7. Yeah, yeah. 14, now, 7. We, it's not on, it's not on like, you know, it's not like we haven't seen massive leaps in the last, you know, few minutes of most auctions on really hot cars. But to get up to 25 means, you know, jumping another $10,000 on a $14,000 place. Uh, that's, that's a long way to go. Um, JP, this car just, closes. You don't see it, that action on cars and bits. JP, this car closes in an hour and it's yeah. in California. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I could drive down and get it right now. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, um, I am going to I'm going to pray to the Volkswagen gods in the sky <laughs> there we go. and say you know 20 you said 19 I'm going to say 20 and just pray to the Volkswagen gods that they are going to bless go. this car and bless yep. Doug DeMuro and bless cars and bids cars and bids yeah, and help. Uh, yeah let's come on this, man let's make this car happen <clears throat> man if I were Doug DeMuro I'd have done five videos of this car on his channels and just been pushing right. the hell out of these are the cars but instead yeah. he's t he, instead he's putting out videos about why Tesla is doing so good on cars and bids it's like oh, shut yeah. up about teslas you can get a tesla anywhere you can't get Pan a 1983 volkswagen yeah. gti yeah. anywhere pandering Ugh. pandering to the toaster crowd Ugh. that's not gonna work yeah. um if i've learned anything doing the show with you with regards to cars and bids is that doug demiro needs to hire a bouncer who won't let everybody in <laughs> and true. just be more yeah. selective of yeah. who he lets through the door yeah. and, and sell fewer cars but sell better cars and get absolutely. more money for them Quality, that will bring more quantity. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. We want hot chicks only like every other guy does. <laughs> you know? oh, anyway. yep. All uh, right. All right. So there's our bits. All right. So that's, you know, that's the big car of the day, but uh, we've got more cars yeah. to go. Let's see. What else do we got yeah. coming up on the auction block that think we think is interesting? JP Volkswagen. Yeah. They, sticking with the Volkswagen undervalued theme. Mm -hmm. We're going to hop over to big trailer and look at a 1991 Vanagon mm -hmm. Westphalia with a four speed manual. Now this car does have 250,000 miles. That's a knock. The car mm -hmm. does have is it's located in Panama City, Florida. That's a double knock. Mm -hmm. But we we have seen that the nice ones of these Vanagons, the Weekenders and the Westphalias, are bringing stupid money these days. Yeah. And yet this car, in an attractive color and with Mercedes Benz 16 inch eight hole wheels, <laughs> how's that? It's a very very JP. common very common mod yeah. because of the same lug pattern. Yeah, same lug pattern because they're, mm. they're you know they're from the same country. Uh, mm -hmm. Hurry up, Tommy, before the Germans get here. <laughs> um, this car is uh, is just languishing at twelve thousand three hundred forty two dollars. Now this auction does have three hours and forty minutes to go, so you're talking like almost four hours before this thing closes. But twelve grand is nowhere near the the values we've seen recently for decent. Vanigans and especially real Westphalias, which this, by all accounts, this car appears to be. I mm. would think, John, that this car should be close to 20 and making that last hour run to get up to about 25, close to $30,000. And yet somehow this car, the tea leaves suggest this car is not going to come anywhere near that. So tell me what I'm missing. Is this thing a rust bucket? Did it have a collision? You know, was it owned by you know, is this formerly a North Korean car? Like, what? Why is this thing? Why is this car all jacked up it's like this? Got Kim would... Jong Il DNA in the <laughs> back. Um, Seriously, like, what's wrong? No, there's one reason. One reason only. It's because this engine has not been rebuilt any time in the. Uh, at, you know, it just hasn't been rebuilt. Yeah. Uh, and these engines yep. are pieces of crap. I mean, that that what? flat four 2.1 has no power whatsoever. Right. And usually, it's... you see them at 200,000 miles. They've been rebuilt at least three times. 
I mean, they can right. get about 75,000 miles before you need to rebuild them. And usually you want to see them rebuilt by someone like Go Westy or one of the other big rebuilders that know what the hell they're doing. And they usually they'll punch them out to a 2.4 or something. A lot of these JP, guys, yeah. This is, this is air cooled, right? It's a, it's no, a, no, no. This is a water pumper. Yeah. So the air cooled ones of the first couple of years. So, uh, yeah. when did the Vanagon come out? 1980. Uh, and I think the 80 through 83, uh, yeah. were, were air cooled 1.9s. There was a diesel available in there uh-huh. for a little while but then they yep. made them into a water pumper and the water pumpers are certainly better bring a little bit more power uh but uh then they have all kinds of overheating issues because the radiators you know 14 feet away from the engine so you got to pump right. all that water from the front of the van again to the back right. they leak they have i mean these just you know and the and the aluminum the aluminum heads with the uh with the block with the cast iron block if you don't use the right um coolant gasket yeah oh, coolant. well it's yeah. the coolant yeah. the coolant will eat the gaskets uh-huh. away so you gotta yeah. get the volkswagen um you know cool so yeah i mean to rebuild this engine is at least you know, really to do it right, let's face it, it's going to be five grand. Plus, looking at some of the comments in the description, I mean, it's leaking power steering fluid. It's it's just, this thing needs $10,000 in mechanical attention right now. You would, If you wanted this car and you wanted to go get it in Florida and drive it back to wherever you live, you're not going to make it. I mean, even oh. the ones that have been rebuilt are not the most reliable things in the world. This car, unfortunately, is just not there. And I think that the savvy people are noticing that. However, this is bring a trailer and bring a trailer tends to bring more money for just about anything that looks cool and has potential. Yeah. So, I mean, could this car, uh, is it going to bring 25? If it does, someone's getting robbed because yeah. I've seen recently uh, on the market, you know, very good examples with Go Westy engines and rebuilds and stuff like that uh, for, you know, in that 20 to 25. But, um, you know, whatever. So where do you think this car is going to land? I, I mean, that's the thing. So it was 11,000 last night. AP, it's sitting at 12,003 right now. Mm, sorry, I mean, this video is giving me a headache. I can't watch that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, do we think this car is going to bring 15? It's got to. It's it's still a, it's a real camper, you know, kitchenette Westphalia. I, and it's a later I'm gonna one, say, too. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say 16,000, knowing that somebody's going to spend five grand to rebuild the motor and possibly two grand to, to ship it home. But then, yeah. then when you're done, you're, you're in it, you know, in the low twenties, and it should be worth twenty five more, right? After it's been refreshed. So, I think yeah. the value is there. But I, I mean, JB, I'm reaching because I've been learning this since we've been doing the show, uh, and I and I'm fast because Esther wants one. So anyway, sixteen thousand is my bid, JP. What do you say? I think that's the perfect. I think that's the perfect prediction, or at least perfect guess, because yeah. do yeah. Our, that, that's right in the middle of people being idiots or people being stupid. Because <laughs> uh, if you pay a dollar more than sixteen thousand dollars, you're 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 in for a world of hurt. If you pay less than 16, you're getting a value and it might be worth going ahead and doing some of the work. Um, I'm going to bet this. I'm going to bet stupid and uh, say 17. Um, All right. Just, you know, just because, you know, what did we see that uh, that Eurovan the other day went for 40, almost 40 000. grand? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, there's hype Oof. on these Westies. Um, I have seen them out on the market. There's a bunch of them out there, but it just seems like people that want one, the only place they're looking is cars and, or bring a trailer. It's like, yo, go on Craigslist. Go they're all over the place. You know Samba. I mean? Go to, like, go to Samba. Samba. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Not mm-hmm. that hard to find. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, interesting car. I'm with you. I'd love to own one of these, but this is not the one I would uh, be trying to get. Because yeah, even if you yeah, do yeah. get it under 16, even if you do get a deal on it, you got a bunch of work ahead of you, man. Projects suck. You know, this is like a, you know, this is like a home, home project. I mean, who wants it to is. put siding up or, or change out the hardwood floors? That's basically what you're doing with this thing. You're not doing anything fun. It's yeah. not like you're modding it to make it do something cool. Anyway, so let's move on. But uh, cool, neat, cool drop, neat rig. Drop, RVs drop a popular. flat six in there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. Throw a throw a nine six four engine, which is what people used to do when you could get those cheap. But <laughs> not a thing you can Oof. do now. All right. Oof. What's the next car of the day? What else we got? Sorry. That's all right. right, JP. Let's stay on Bring a Trailer. Uh, this okay. next auction is no reserve. It's mm. a 1987 Porsche 924 yes. S five speed uh out of oregon city oregon uh it shows thirty eight thousand miles it says true mileage unknown and even on the i think the carfax or something it says it might be a rollback my guess is because it's a five digit odometer uh that this thing probably showed like you know eighty thousand miles ninety thousand miles and then it must have gone a long period of time and showed something in the teens or 20s mm-hmm. and it, and so it's got this like suspected uh, odometer rollback uh, discrepancy, but I think it just flipped and it's probably 138,000 miles. I 
really want one of these, you know, uh, yeah. what do they call it? Uh, transaxle cars from Porsche, either a 924 S or a 944 uh, that I can just modify and have fun with. Um, you know, at a glance, this would be a cool car to have, but this one's just particularly rough. What's mm. interesting to note, JP, correct me if I have my if I have this inaccurately. The early 924s employed an Audi derived motor, but the later cars, like this 87, where it says 924S, the four cylinder, the two and a half liter four cylinder inline motor is actually a Porsche derived motor. Is that correct, JP? Yeah, I mean it's the 944 yeah. engine. It's a 2.5 liter yeah, 944 the, engine. Right. In, so in, this, 80, in 87, they bumped the the uh, they bumped the 944 engine up to like a 2.7. Uh, so 87 and the 924 had the old uh, 2.5. 944. Engine. Yeah. Right. So uh, so the early 924s with the Audi drive motors made like mm. 140 horsepower or something, and that was a really noisy motor this 944 motor that porsche built um only makes like 155 160 horsepower but it's smoother it's faster it's got more torque and it's probably it, you know and just a more fun car to drive mm -hmm. so if it had to be a 924 i would want one of these just maybe not this one uh with 138,000 miles this car's had a bad repaint job um, and just looking around, it just it, cosmetically it looks kind of roached out. I'm not a huge fan of the brown interior. I could go for burgundy or dark blue, even a tan with a black dash, but but this thing's just a little barfable. Um, something about the uh, you know the the Mobile One Pegasus and the gold wheels kind of caught my attention. But this car is uh, a little ratty. Maybe it could be fixed, but I you know. It's already at fifty five hundred dollars, and I don't think this car is worth more than seven thousand bucks. So where is it going to land? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. JP, t talk to me more about this thing. What what is it? Why do I like it? Why do I hate it? You know. Well, because it's a 924S, and yes, 924Ss are really awesome. Uh, they're yeah, lighter right? than the 944s of the contemporaries and have about the same power. So, you know, on paper, it has everything. This car, I'm totally with you. There is, it, look, I'm from the Northwest, and I know what the Northwest can do to cars. You know, 924s were worthless for so long, and so this car was probably neglected for a long time, and someone got a hold of it and tried to make it nice. But, you know, you can see the moisture has kind of warped the dash. It's pretty Ugh. crazy it doesn't have any cracks though which is right. kind of nice yeah. yeah but the carpet is just gunked i mean really the big thing that we're paying attention to you know all the trim pieces are less expensive i mean it's a plastic gear shift lever it's a vinyl uh you know boot it, the, the cars yeah. were made to be the entry level porsche the 944 right. got way better stuff um this is and on top of it, I mean, we were just looking at all the body lines earlier on this car and how just not right they were. I do love the yeah. Porsche script. Uh, right, the, the sport cloth. In the, yeah, in the, the sport cloth. Yeah. Yeah, so there's cool. a lot to love on this car. And it's funny that you mentioned, uh, you know, that you saw the Pegasus and the gold wheels and stuff like that. If I had this car and I were trying to sell it, <laughs> I got to hand it to the seller. I would do a lot of the same stuff just to give it oh some God, yeah. kind of pop to kind of make your eye, take your eye away from the, the, the crap part of this car um right. the gold wheels on the white with the with the logo i mean that's kind of fun uh, this would be yeah. a great like track you know just rat rod kind of thing or oh, mob around if you can get totally it yeah. but it's it's too far gone to make it something that's ever going to be collectible uh boy it looks like it could be good but it's just not i mean all these little right. i mean it's definitely had front end collisions nothing like it doesn't like looking at the rails it doesn't look like it's been just buckled or anything like that but i mean let's face it back in the 70s and 80 well 80s and 90s carfax didn't exist back then so a lot of accidents right. weren't reported to anyone so just because it doesn't have an accident yeah. on the carfax doesn't mean bubkiss this car certainly has but nothing doesn't look like anything horrible it's just yeah. old and been but, sitting and in a wet place for a very long time yeah and even even when carfax got going cars this inexpensive didn't mm. make it to the body shop on the yeah. insurance's dime this yeah. car went out the back of somebody's garage and they hit it with a baseball bat to get yeah. the fenders right you know yeah. what i mean like not, and we're, we're not saying that anything. this yeah. car has had that but there's something that doesn't smell right in denmark with this mm. particular car and therefore i i as much as I want one, I don't want this one. Yeah. So with uh, JP, with about three and a half hours to go, our car is sitting at $5,500, again, out of Oregon, Oregon City, Oregon, uh, probably about 138,000 miles on the odometer. Um, you know, it's all there, but it's just a little rough. I I, I struggled to say I, I think $8,000 is all the money for this car, yeah. and that's only because it's on Bring a Trailer. And there's just... 
that hint of enthusiasm that, of the the decals and the painted wheels uh, for that reason i'm giving it eight otherwise i think this car is worth 6500 to 7000 bucks but here on this platform i'm going to say 8000 bucks and you know see if i'm right yeah, I'm going to be a little more conservative and say seven. I, I'm with yeah. you. Uh, it could bring some extra money because of the play. It's the opposite of cars and bids. This car and cars and bids would <laughs> yeah, make right. four grand if you're lucky. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, which yeah, is we, really yeah. what it's worth. I mean, the fact that it's at 55 is too high for me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, 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 we'll see what happens. I paid, I paid $3,500 for a non-running version of the same car out of uh, North Carolina that a little old lady swindled me into buying. And then it arrived and it, it smelled like, and, and by all accounts looked like she had pulled it up from the bottom of a lake before she sold it to me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wound up just turning the car. I gave it to a kid in Vegas for 1500 bucks and he was going to work on it with his dad. And I just took the two grand loss because I, I really liked the kid. I was like, here, man, have fun with it. And, uh, <laughs> and so he got that car running. So if you see a red, 924s running around vegas uh with with this uh, create just a kid probably smiling from ear to ear that's that was my old car so anyways all right let's move on I, we gotta move it along here what do we got next? all right uh, suzuki samurai jp yeah I, I can't believe this car doesn't have like uh you know like the owner must have been decapitated didn't, didn't these cars flip <laughs> over around every everything single flipped third? over back then unlike, you know unlike the gti these cars did not stay on the tires yeah. Um, our car shows 14,000 miles, true mileage unknown. I'm guessing, again, it's the same thing with an odometer flip. It's probably 114,000 miles. The real wear and tear, you can see some like corrosion uh, on the springs and the leaf springs and the, the uh, rear axle with the photos underneath the car. So um, I, it's weird because at $8,300 where the car currently sits, offered out of Glendale, Arizona, uh, I would suggest that that car is already well overvalued. And it's because either the car was repainted or they did a nice coat of wax on it. It looks to me like somebody's buying this car as it's a beautiful preserved example. And I don't think it is. JP, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, underneath, this car is just like any other. I, it's weird. You don't see Samurais every day. They were actually kind of dangerous if you didn't really know how to control a vehicle. Mm. Um but man, no, these... you know, I gotta, I no, I, they weren't, they were not dangerous they at all. No, they, really? so they, yeah, well, the, the, the perception was that they were because the, yeah. they were cheap and they were cute and they were fun. And so you had people buying them uh, that thought that, Oh, I'm going to drive this like my Nissan Sentra. It's not a Nissan Sentra. I mean, the Jeep CJ five, if you recall, uh, also had the same, uh, it was like, they weren't recalled. They, they had some kind of like consumer reports ban thing on it that wound up just yeah. being complete horse crap. It was just people. Yes, uh -huh. People don't know how to drive them, but if you try to take a, you know, 30, mile an hour corner in one of these at 60 like you pretty much can in a nissan Sentra, you're gonna fall over just like you would in a cj5 uh the right. cj that's why the cj5 and the cj7 that is why they created the cj7 because they made it a little <laughs> longer if you look at the cj5 doors they're short cj7 doors are a little longer it's because they have a longer wheelbase so they're less likely to fall over when you go in this is a utility rig and people yes they they but also if you recall the bronco 2 had the exact same uh, yep. issue technically mm -hmm. but these are these are utility vehicles they're not designed to be whipping around corners now that right. said you know i mean is it the is it as safe as a cayenne no i mean a cayenne is built no. to be able to go in the corners and go over stuff these things yeah. are super cheap and super fun they take they they drink no gas they are little yeah. goats they'll climb over anything and i mean i i, I miss these I remember, um, man, they were these. everywhere. Yeah, they were oh. everywhere. And, you know, I almost want one of these more than I want like a Wrangler of its contemporary because they're much more rare. And this would be a lot more fun at like a, uh, Redwood type of event. This one seems to be I'll, in decent shape, but I'll give you this. If you look at the mm -hmm. side profile of this, there's a nice photo with this little canopy popped up a side profile on the, on the thing. It is a good looking vehicle. Yeah. It is a really attractive vehicle and it looks kind of European. I just remember when these cars came out when we were in high school, Again, every rich kid in the neighborhood yeah. was driving one of these things. Um, they are anemic. It's just a little 1.3 liter inline four, five speed manual, all wheel drive, uh, Billy Goat. Um, but man, they just like fell off the planet. You never see them anymore. And so, as such, this car is already at $8,300, which I would think is already all the money. I mean, weren't these things only like $15,000 when they were brand yeah, new? They, were, uh, they don't even weren't even that. They were like $79.99 type of thing. I mean, um, that is just so wild. Cheap. Um, do yeah. you, okay. So remember the Audi 5,000? 
I do. Yeah. Unintended that, acceleration. Yeah. Was that, was yeah. that warranted? Yeah. No, the answer no, no, no. is no, was, it wasn't. That no, was complete not, no. horse crap. And yeah, almost no. always in these crazy consumer, you know, hack jobs that, that come out by people that really yeah. don't know. It's like the same thing that's like a bunch of people on the internet. If you look up uh, yeah. Tesla's, they say, oh, they're tailbreak cars because the tires wear out. Like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the tires wear out because people are mashing on the tires to go to, to do burnouts and stuff like that because they're so fast in a straight line. There's but they don't inherently wear out tires if you drive it normally, <laughs> you know? So you see like people, uh, there's a review that was going around some guy who was talking about how bad his Tesla was. He's some famous inf- influencer who uh-huh. kept bringing right. his Tesla back to, to the Tesla dealership because, Oh, I need new tires again. This just isn't, this isn't acceptable. A car of this caliber <laughs> should not be ruining tires this quickly. And it's like, and they oh kept giving gosh, them tires. So up. it's like, Oh my God. Oh my whatever, God. Dude. Yeah. So <laughs> I, the people that complained about the, the safety of a, of a, samurai uh were the exact same type of people in my opinion so there it is uh i love this car but it's certainly not worth a ton of money if it were a hard top the hard tops are super rare and bring a good uh, for some reason or just bring so much money but these little convertible yeah. ones far less um so what do you think this one's gonna bring so jp you were right on i just looked it up real quick so the original mm-hmm. msrp you said seventy nine hundred dollars it was eighty two hundred dollars <laughs> in 92 yeah yeah well, the so 80s that's, ones uh, the 87 just, was probably like 69.99 or something right 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 right, right. Yeah. yeah so you were spot on with that take so you know by that rationale um this car is already <laughs> over original msrp which is yeah. bananas to me and i i again i where is this car possibly going to go from here uh so at eighty three hundred dollars I put nine thousand bucks, but I'm uh, I'm gonna read the tea leaves. Am I wrong? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Real, I just want to look up one more thing, JP. This car is sitting on, come on, man, seven bids. Not a lot of action. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave my bid at nine thousand dollars and send it to you. What yeah, do you say? Good. I'll take ten because I think it's gonna go over. I think somebody yeah, wants this thing. I, I thought I, I was it. gonna jump to ten. How much fun is that? Oh man, I'd rather have a thing, but whatever. Yeah, but I don't think you're going to find a thing for ten grand. I mean, I know we no, have not one as nice possible. as the samurai. Uh, yeah, yeah, not but as this nice little as samurai, this. and the samurai is going to be much more useful. Um, but you definitely don't want to be in an accident one. <laughs> but all neither right. would you in a thing though. So I suppose you're right. Uh, <laughs> all right, last car of the day and last car of the week is a really firecracker car. I love these, uh, Michael. Oh, what, do, what do you got to say about this car, Chris? Chris Bangle, the designer at BMW, who is responsible for the flamed edge styling. Do you remember all that? Mm-hmm. How nerdy is that? Yeah. Chris Bangle was hated on the emerging BMW forums. They wanted to crucify this guy like he was the governor of Michigan. Sorry to go political <laughs> on you. But anyway, uh, I actually I agree with you, JP. I absolutely love this car. I, I, I don't know what it is. I can't literally can't put my finger on it and describe to you why this car is so cool to me. Um, but I love and and our car here with the uh, little carbon rear wing and the little winglets on the front air dam and these gorgeous matte black mesh wheels uh, are just stunning. Apex 18 inch wheels are just they make the car. It's absolutely stun- stunning. So what we're looking at here uh, is a 2007 BMW Z4, but the Enku, this car uses the S54 3.2 liter inline six normally aspirated individual throttle bodies 320 horsepower you can rev it you can roll it you can slide it this car is absolutely cool um what a what a little monster this car total overachiever it, it's somehow jp when you look at it from the rear three quarters it kind of looks like and i'm really reaching here but it looks like a a slightly modern take on like a Jaguar E-Type or the yeah. the a Shelby Daytona Coupe. It's just that fastback design that was so cool in the 60s is almost reborn here in the early 2000s. And yet this car caused such a stir. It was so much controversy surrounding it. Um, totally undo. Our car is offered out of Rancho Cucamonga, which you had uh, alluded to earlier. <laughs> it is a manual transmission version, which is really cool because a lot of these cars were, were offered with a terrible single not in the uh, sequential not in the yes yeah, the, yeah. the m only had the uh the m oh only had okay the, uh, good, good 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 only had the manual because uh, regular z force came with yeah. the smg which yeah. was a terrible uh, sequential manual gearbox mm-hmm. uh but this car has just uh 54 000 miles on it and by all accounts you know it's hard to believe jp that car you're looking at is 14 years old and it looks it looks brand new it looks yeah. like it's still under warranty and it's not so uh I, I love this thing i'm glad you picked it great great grab what do you say 
So, I mean, look, these cars are so much fun to drive. When they came out, uh, it was, I mean, so this is a 2007. These, these hit the floor. Um, you're right that the designer got a lot of poop when the Z4 came oh. out, especially, Oof. you know, because of the cab. But I, when this car came out, it was kind of the opposite in coupe form. And I like the cabs. I mean, I, I yeah. actually owned one. Um, but uh, I, this coupe, I think, is one of the top 10 best looking sports cars of all time. I mean, especially consider what, how much the, you know, the money, they're not terribly expensive. There are a lot of cars that are better looking, but cost 10 times the money. This car, when it came out, it was during the recession. It was right at the, the yeah. these cars dropped right when everything went to hell and yep. they were supposed to be an $80,000 car. And I remember them having, as they say in the business, uh, like $40,000 of trunk money. They were begging people to buy these in 2008, right. 2009. They still had new ones sitting there. They're like, look, what do we got? to do uh you could have bought this car brand spanking new from the dealership in 2009 for thirty nine thousand dollars. it was unbelievable this one has a little bit of it has a little accident on the uh, carfax not a big deal doesn't this look like the bummer. airbags went off yeah um but right. uh, this is one of the few cars that i would yeah. consider over a contemporary uh 911 of the same year yeah well because it's one of the few cars out there that might be almost as fun to drive and, yeah. and chris I would Bengel, dare i dare i'd say maybe more fun you know having driven both yeah. hard well it's a, it's a it's a short wheelbase and it's a yeah. lightweight car and it's got a yeah. it's got a great rev happy motor and it's it's a proper manual uh jp th this car looks like a concept car offered mm -hmm. to the public which is yeah. just amazing somehow he managed to put sharp crease edges all over the car and yet when you look at it all you see is curves yeah. and that is the that is the 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 magic of his designs and does everybody uh, and I commend see the z it. in the in the in the door there so you've yeah. got the top of the z the yep. cross of the z yep. and the bottom of the z because it's a z yes door. Somewhere, oh, somewhere, the designers at yeah. Zagato are yeah. are like are like taking their arms and throwing all the paperwork off yeah. their desk, screaming yeah. in Italian, going, "My God, how did this fucking American do it?" You know? <laughs> Just like pissing off Zagato to no end because he absolutely in this car, this if if Zagato built it, they would have they would have paid two hundred fifty thousand for this car, but it came from Chris Bangle and they wanted to murder him for it. I mean, just go figure. You're right. You know what this car is like to drive? Uh, I just drove the new uh, GT4 the other day. For yeah, the first I time, bet the brand yeah, new yeah, one. Yeah. And right. even though this engine is not in the rear, it's in the front. You know that yeah. long nose that everyone notices that long nose. The engine's yeah. like really pretty much in the middle, uh, yep. and it has that same kind of grunt that the that the GT4 has, and, right. and it has. Yeah. That same short shifter and if any car that's as close this is as close to a gt4 as you're going to yeah. get for uh, a quarter of the money so yeah. you know there it is yeah, this All would right. be your poor poor man's gt4 i agree uh jp the car I, is I, I, now i want one <laughs> now i'm gonna be yeah. like going and shopping for one what the hell yeah yeah uh, uh, so this car is now sitting at twenty five thousand two hundred fifty, which means it got a couple of bids overnight despite the accident on the carfax mm -hmm. out of california it's on 13 bids with three hours to go uh, I put twenty nine thousand dollars, and it's at twenty five. I think my 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 guess is conservative. If it fails to make thirty, it's because of the Carfax. But I think this car is going to bring thirty one thousand dollars. So I'm going to up my bid a couple of grand, despite the low action. Like you said, you don't see them very often, and maybe this car is going to have its due. Uh, it is definitely a BMW I would like to own. So I'm going to say thirty one and. Mm -hmm. Maybe I regret it, but uh, I don't think you will. I think it's going to go higher than that. Look, it's a it's a it's a true enthusiast car with all the right mods. A lot of times people mod the cars incorrectly. This one is modded almost perfectly. I mean, it's oh, got yeah. H and R's, H and R's, and uh, yep. coilovers, not just springs. Right. So you know you're right. not gonna have going. The right wheels, everything, everything correct has been so done to cool. this car. It looks fantastic. The wheel size, they didn't go 19s, you know, uh, which was 19s look spectacular in the Z4M, but is gonna hinder the performance a little bit. You're gonna get more unsprung weight. Uh, it, so the 18 inch wheel yeah. is really the correct size from a performance point of view. And yep. uh, you know this, it's in the right place. I mean, you can go out uh, if you're in California. You just go down oh, to Cucamonga, yeah. pick it up, and go hit the Oof. hit the you know hit the crest yeah. the same day. Of course, it's covered with snow right now. But you know this car uh, even has, more fun. Check all the boxes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna go 33. Uh, wow, I think it, I think all right, 35. Um, it could. Yeah, I it mean could. it's that it's a great car. 
if Eric Keller was selling this car out of uh, what you would call it, uh, Cincinnati, mm-hmm. Ohio, uh, enthusiast auto group, the M specialist in our country, yeah. uh, he'd probably list it for forty five. I mean, he'd he'd yeah. get all the money for it because he's got the audience. Uh, so bring a trailer is probably the second best option for selling this car. So there you go. We'll see. Well, listen, I have a GT3 clone that's in the same color. Uh, you know, yeah. would you rather have that car or that's, this car? The same and, and similar horsepower. I mean, those cars are actually a, a really good match for one another. I don't know, man. It's, it's, Z4 it's, it's blow a, the wheels off the off the, uh, off the it's possible. I have to say, possible. It. Sorry, unless I unless I way was more torque. 911. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it, look, it, you know, yeah, you're yeah. definitely the faster driver of us. But uh, <laughs> if if the two of if I had to if I had to chase you on a canyon road, I'm oh, picking you, the yeah. Z4 because that would oh, give you me a fighting chance. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get away from you, and I was just teasing. I, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I, everybody, oh, I everybody thinks they're the best driver that God ever created. I can uh, take us I, away in the uh, in the uh, in the 996 video. Another yeah. exclusive. All right, guys, that's this is it. This is the end of Bid Nerds for the week. Uh, a good thanks week. for joining us. Go uh, we will see you Monday. Have fun <laughs> watching the big game this weekend. If you're yeah. going to be betting on that, uh, you know, good luck yeah. with that. Um, yeah. the, we'll help uh, you spend new your winnings. goat versus the old goat, right? Isn't that? Yeah, the, uh, that's right. That that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. All the right. Milk bowl. Sports ball. Okay. Uh, there it is, guys. <laughs> cars and bids. Bring a trailer. This is Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of those two platforms and and more. Uh, we will see you Monday for another edition of Bid Nerds. See you then. Great week, JP. See you, buddy. All right. Man, look at this. Look at this. We'll, we'll just finish the show out with this. I'm going to have Esther make some popcorn. Can't <laughs> look wait. Look at that. Look at that car. So it happens to How be much the same did it cost? Before. How much did it cost to rent the helicopter? <laughs> Okay, I changed my mind. I want this car back. Look at that thing. I have to say, JP, as you're getting older, you're picking better music to score your videos with. (laughs) Is that right? Do you like this track better than the uh, Cayenne track or this track? Uh, The Cayenne track is really good, but both of these are better than some of the early (laughs) DF Well, I've I've got multiple libraries and more music has come out. uh, Nice. There it is, guys.